Welcome to the session for uh, World Kidney Day. I'm Dr. Akhila Vasan, consultant pediatric nephrologist working at Majumdar Shaw Medical Center in Bangalore. I'd like to talk about nephrotic syndrome, uh, which affects um, the sieve like pores in the kidneys, wherein, because of some abnormalities in the um, immunity, there is some protein leak and um, there is decreased protein in the blood and uh, the child presents it with some swelling as well as uh, decreased um, in, sorry, increased uh, cholesterol in the blood. So this is uh, you know, a collection of symptoms which we see and it generally affects children between 2 to 10 years of age. And um, the common uh, treatment which we give uh, for this is steroids. And the first episode of nephrotic syndrome is uh, treated with steroids um, on a daily basis for six weeks, followed by an alternate day regimen for another, for another six weeks, and uh, this is gradually weaned and stopped. Following this, there is a high chance of the same problem occurring again, and we call this a relapse. And there's an 80% chance of a relapse happening. So um, again, the treatment for a relapse is a relapse regimen of, of um, steroids, which will involve a shorter course of steroids over a period of four weeks, and then uh, you know um, a quick weaning of the steroids. So often parents panic um, uh, when they hear uh, you know nephrotic syndrome, thinking that their child uh, has uh, some serious kidney problem, and they relate that to kidney failure. Actually, um, nephrotic syndrome, in children with nephrotic syndrome, the kidney function majority of the times is normal, unless um, they also have, have dehydration and as a result, they have, you know, their kidneys have um, shut down on a temporary basis. So um, it doesn't mean to say that you know your kidneys um, are working any, any less. So kidney function will generally be normal, but it's, it only means that the kidneys are a little bit more leaky and there is protein leak in the urine. Around 80% of the children respond to steroids, and they are called as steroid-sensitive nef uh, nephrotic syndrome. And around 20% um, uh, of the children do not respond to steroids, and they're called as children with steroid-resistant uh, nephrotic syndrome. These are the category of children uh, who are difficult to treat with and th they might be the group who may end up with some chronic kidney disease in the future or they might end up requiring some treatment or and end up having a difficult course in the future. One thing what families have to understand is that um, it is not just a one-off course. There is no cure for nephrotic syndrome. It can only be kept under control. So the chances of relapse happening is around 80 percent and once the child becomes uh, you know around 14 to 16 years of age around teenage years the chances of this problem automatically um, uh, you know resolving or um, curing um, by itself is about uh, you know 80 percent so until then we will have to give medicines to control this problem so um, majority of the parents out of desperacy they keep on uh, changing um, doctors thinking that oh my child is having uh, you know this relapse of nephrotic syndrome again and again maybe another doctor will do uh, you know uh, do a better job uh, and unfortunately the child ends up um, you know being at a disadvantage because the child is ending up um, you know getting a higher cumulative dose of steroids so it's important to stick to one doctor because that doctor would know how much of cumulative dose of steroids um, you know the child has got and how many times the child has relapsed if a child has had a relapse uh, which means to say that the protein leak uh, of three days of uh, three plus of protein in the urine has happened once again um, you know um, in um, uh, and um, and this has happened more than two times in six months or more than four times in one year. They are called as frequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome. So if a child has frequently relaxed, relapsed nephrotic syndrome or if they are steroid dependent, so when we try to wean off the dose of steroid um, uh, steroids, if a child has a relapse, then they would be called, uh, they're termed as steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome. So these are the difficult to treat cases of nephrotic syndrome.
And for these category of patient, we have, patients, we have you know, certain medicines, what we call as second line agents. So we have in our pockets around five different types of medicines called as levamisole, MMF, cyclosporin, uh, cyclophosphamide, tacrolimus, um, um, you know, uh, uh, rituximab, etc. And we choose according um, to uh, the patient, what suits the patient, and uh, well, you know, according to the age group, according to the severity of the disease, etc. What is more appropriate for the child and the nature of the disease to control relapse? And even when we use these medicines, it doesn't mean to say they all would work. You know, some children may respond to these medicines, some children may not. So parents need to understand that as well. So it's actually a different, uh, difficult course to uh, go through. The other important thing is relapses can happen when uh, children have uh, something simple like a cough and cold. And this happens very often. And this is like a catch-22 situation. So when you, when you have a cold, you can get a relapse. And, and when you have a relapse, you're on steroids, your immunity is suppressed and the chances of getting a cold is much higher. So uh, it is difficult. But that doesn't mean to say you don't send your child uh, you know, uh, to school. Your child should lead a normal life. So you can send your child to school, educate them uh, you know, like normal. They can uh, lead a normal life um, and do all the activities like other children. In the past, a lot of kidney biopsies used to be done. Uh, but now, uh, kidney biopsies um, are, are not being done that often. It is being preserved only for the steroid, children with steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome or if they have you know, high blood pressure or um, if they're uh, seeing any protein leak in the urine or if the uh, creatinine is high or if there are any other systemic uh, symptoms. So um, again, I don't uh, I would advise parents not to you know, panic about you know, kidney biopsies as such. If children with nephrotic syndrome develop loose motions or vomiting, um, you know, they can develop acute kidney injury and repeated uh, episodes of acute kidney injury can lead to chronic kidney disease. They can have uh, infections, uh, especially pneumococcal infections, um, etc. Or um, uh, they can have blood clots. <coughs> A tendency to develop blood clots. They can have a tendency to develop high blood pressures because of the use of steroids. Um, and they can also have high cholesterol. Now, uh, it's the uh, duty of or the responsibility of the doctor uh, to make sure that um, um, uh, you know, the uh, steroids, uh, the cumulative dose of steroids uh, is not too high so that it affects the growth of the um, child. So I would advise parents not to panic. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, when they go through the uh, list of side effects of steroids, when, you know, on the internet, um, uh, but then, you know, trust the doctor and then um, let them actually lead the uh, dosage of the steroids. I would never ever um, take the uh, the responsibility of, um, you know, uh, taking the steroids or. Uh, giving your child steroids without the advice of your doctor because that would do more harm to your child. So that's a very important um, uh, you know, message which I would like to drive in to parents of uh, uh, nephrotic syndrome. And how to care for your child? A simple thing is uh, you know, to buy a dipstick uh, box and you can uh, you know, uh, measure the protein leak of uh, your child uh, every morning or whenever your child is unwell or whenever you drop down the dosage, dosage of uh, st steroids and uh, you can bring in that diary to uh, your OPD. And definitely I would avoid uh, in our alternative therapy uh, which would be native medicines uh, or uh, you know uh, Ayurvedic medicines etc because alternative therapy does not work. And um, the other thing is uh, we have advised to the low salt diet and a low um, fat or a cholesterol diet. Um, and vaccinations specifically um, should be directed as per your nephrologist. So especially when your child is not on any of the immunosuppressants, that's the um, time when uh, you catch up on all your uh, vaccinations. So this was a very quick information session on how to take care of your child with nephrotic syndrome. Do not panic this, because it is a very common condition. Your child has an 80% chance of coming out of it um, in, during the teenage years. Until then, 
uh, you will have to support your child um, and just because your child is uh, one more thing just because your child has got nephrotic syndrome many people uh, you know tend to not discipline their child uh, especially when they're on steroids that's probably the wrong thing to do so to conclude um, uh, I would suggest parents to uh, ensure that you uh, attend regular outpatient visits, ensure you give your uh, medicines regularly to your patients, follow the advice of your doctor. Thank you.